pleasure to welcome you to the Luxury Brand Symposium held at AUS in partnership with the Chaloub Group. Having launched the first Luxury Brand Management Professorship in the MENA region with the support of the Chaloub Group two years ago, we share a strong bond through commitment to education and leadership. As a star in the field of luxury goods, the Chaloub Group represents a high-quality partnerships between AUS and the Chaloub Group. The global luxury goods industry, comprising fashion, jewelry, cosmetics, fragrances, watches, luggage, handbags, and much more, is a multi-billion dollar industry that continues to grow and play a diverse role in economies throughout the world. According to Bain & Company, one of the world's leading advisors to the global luxury goods industry, the global personal luxury goods market saw $251 billion in revenue last year alone, an increase of 3% from the year before. This growth continued into this year with the market's full year performance expected to increase between 2 and 4% on an annual basis. With the changing dynamics of today's global marketplace, where cross-cultural influences and perspectives flow across national boundaries, and where experiences as how business is conducted have an impact far and wide, shared values have assumed a significant role, luxury brands are considered distinct because of the quality of their products. The history, artisanship, expertise, and attention to detail of luxury brands are what set them apart from others. Perhaps it might not be realized, but it is this meticulousness that is not only responsible for the uniqueness of the product, but also for preserving a particular skill and vocation undertaken by hand that might otherwise have fallen by the wayside due to automation. Throughout the world, we are still fortunate to retain many age-old traditional crafts because of the luxury brand industry, which has sustained them by creating a demand. In this day and age, sustainability is an essential factor without which a corporate entity cannot expect to succeed in the long term. The luxury brand industry is cognizant of this reality and has, along with other industries, expanded its approach to corporate social responsibility. According to a report compiled by Deloitte Touche Tomatsu Limited across the industry, there is now an expectation that societal and environmental investment should go hand in hand with a brand's corporate strategy. Skilled artisans from an integral part of any luxury brand's unique selling points form uh, sorry, form an uh, integral part of any luxury brand's unique selling points. And many luxury brands are undertaking support programs aimed at local artisans and their traditional skills. For instance, Brunello Cuccinelli School of Craftsmanship works with local communities not only to create employment, but also to maintain the legacy of their craftsmanship. Other prominent brands such as Fendi, Bulgari, and Todd's give back to the citizens of regions to which they belong by supporting the preservation of, of their prominent cultural monuments, such as the Spanish Steps and the Colosseum in Rome and art collections. The newly expanded Milan complex, supported by Prada, opened to the public earlier this year. Omega has announced a five-year association with the new section of Milan's Leonardo da Vinci Museum of Science and Technology, devoted exclusively to space and astronomy. LVMH hosts the Young Fashion Designers competition and supports and nurtures the winning designers. Other brands, such as a few from the Estee Lauder Group, have launched a range of pink, pink ribbon products to donate a portion of their sales to the Breast Cancer Research Foundation. As markets expand, the luxury brand industry's commitment to sustainability, societal responsibility, and improving its environmental footprint appears to be moving ahead. At AUS, it has been our mission to engage with the industry and society 
and to act as a bridge between the two. Our luxury course offerings have been growing since 2012, when we first introduced a 400-level senior luxury brand management course. Over the past two years, we have introduced two other luxury courses, one in fashion marketing and one in business of luxury, and student demand has been extremely high. With 90 registered students across the three courses, the university's commitment to the luxury brand industry is growing stronger. This symposium is a reflection of that commitment. I look forward to listening to eminent panelists, sharing their views about our regional industry's efforts to tackle issues of sustainability, support, and long-term opportunities. Once again, I would like to welcome you to AUS and to extend an appreciation to the Shaloub Group as well as the School of Business Administration for organizing this event. Now, and without further ado, I would like to introduce our keynote speaker, Mr. Patrick Shaloub, co-CEO of the Shaloub Group, who will present the content of the Shaloub Group's third white paper, Luxury in the Gulf, a Sustainable Future. The Shaloub Group is a leading partner for luxury across the Middle East. The Shaloub Group is a family business which has been in the region for more than 60 years. For 30 years, Patrick Shaloub has been involved in the strategic development of the business to guarantee its long-term success. As such, he continues to expand the group's distribution, retail business, and marketing and communications activities, and also eager to strengthen the group's support services. Patrick has been instrumental in guiding the development of a sustainability strategy for the group with a focus on education, environmental, and humanitarian sustainability. At the age of 42, the French government awarded him with the Medal of Chevalier de l'Ordre National de Mérite. He's a founding member of the Rotary and Capital Club and also, and also an active member of the Young Presidents Organization. He also co-chairs the board of directors of Endeavors UAE Affiliate. Mr. Patrick Shaloub. Good morning, everyone. Um, it's a pleasure being with you. Thank you for hosting us. Thank you for your nice word. And, uh, uh, I much appreciate this partnership which we have established now since a few years with the American University of Sharjah. As you mentioned, it, the Shaloub Group is a family business. It's a family business which has been established 60 years ago. It's a family business which has been created by my father and mother. And we are very proudly, my brother, myself, and our 2012 uh, team members, very proud of uh, continuing what have been started and trying to push it for, uh, further. As a family business, we are very committed to sustainability. Obviously, our focus is luxury and, in the, uh, and the Middle East. But sustainability is very important for a business created six years ago and where we would like it to exist and develop in 60 years, 120 years, 180 years from now for our children, the grandchildren, and to develop our business. But how can we be a sustainable business if we are not living in a sustainable environment? How can we really not put sustainability as our first priority? So to build this sustainable model, it's important that we build it in a very sustainable environment. And luxury has been often accused not to be uh, going very much in pair with sustainability, but it's something which we will be bringing forward uh, during uh, this day um, seminar. It's true that in the past 30, 40 years, we have all um, somehow destroyed a little bit the earth, like nobody have ever done before. But the earth is strong and have faced since uh, uh, four billion years or more, many big crises. Nevertheless, we have to act, and we have to act seriously 
all of us in any industry or any activity where we are. What we are witnessing today is a change of mindset. What we are witnessing today, including in the Gulf countries, are totally what we could call a silent revolution. This revolution of consciousness, where people are becoming much more conscious of the needs of creating sustainability around us. At government level, at corporate level, and at individual level. So we'll have to create much stronger awareness and have multiple initiatives which are taking place. Let me introduce a few paradox which we are living in uh, this region, some of them which are, have been the basis of our white paper. Every year since now three years, we are, uh, we are uh, um, publishing this white paper on a different topic and different subject. And this year white paper was about luxury and sustainability. Uh, 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 so it has been built on few paradox which we have discovered and which I will develop. I will then explain the inherent um, social value which we could see in our society into the Gulf. I will then focus a little bit on the family business as we are a family business and I think that the family business create a really sustainable model and then reveal some of the strong initiatives which are facing uh, in order to face those current uh, challenges which we have and showcasing this change of mindset. We are in a polarized region. We are in a polarized region and as I said, we are facing many paradox and I will highlight three of them. Our region is a region where we have probably some of the highest GDP per capita in the world. Qatar is on top of the list. It even went up from the figure I'm mentioning. It's over $100,000 per capita today. But it's not um, only uh, Qatar. Even the UAE are among the 10 highest uh, GDP into the world, very comparable to the GDP of the US. At the same time, we are facing a critical problem. A critical problem which we could see all around the world, but which is even more critical and less understandable into the Middle East. We have a very high youth unemployment into a region which have highest GDP into the world. About 30% of the region in Saudi Arabia, Qatar, of the GCC region, uh, youth are unemployed today. If we compare it to other parts of the world, it's much higher even than Africa, where there is only, but it's already a lot, 24% of uh, unemployment about it. So is it sustainable to have such a high GDP and such a high level of unemployment? And I think that I will try to bring some of the answer um, about it. Sorry. It will come. In our part of the world, we, are, we have a very high consumption of natural um, uh, resources. Uh, we are among the highest, uh, probably, as, uh, uh, users of natural re resources. Um, we have, I would say, a very high carbon footprint per capita, again, amongst the, the, the highest into the world. At the same time, we could be very proud that some of the initiative, we have one of the only four worldwide uh, urban sustainable project. I'm speaking about Master City. And soon other projects which are again uh, not giving any uh, carbon free, uh, which would be quite uh, spectacular to see and which probably is the way forward in order to reduce this very high consumption of natural uh, resources. Again, in our part of the world, we have some of the highest consumers spent into the world. According to our consumer research, we have an average spend of over $2,400 on fashion, beauty, and gift, while if we compare it to some of the Western world, the, those figures would stand at $1,000 or less than $1,000 on the same category of it. But at the same time, we have a part of the world which is uh, giving a lot into foreign aids into the world. 
with a huge contribution among the 10 biggest uh, in the world, not per capita, in, 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 uh, in value, as we are reaching about uh, over $5 billion of foreign aid for the only country of the UAE about it. So those paradox uh, explain why we felt it was important that we focus a lot on sustainability, because sustainability is key to shape for us, for you, a different future and the future into the region. But let me go back a little bit to some of the social value of this part of the world. A lot of you know them, have lived this cultural and social values, but I think it's important to uh, remind them because I'm sure that this will contribute a lot for this sustainable future. The ancient tri uh, tribal structure have shaped the culture of the modern Gulf region and are an integral part to the region inherited social value which still feature prominent today. Community, solidarity, trust are deep-rooted values into the society which stem from a Bedouin culture and um, anchored into a strong interpersonal bonds. Tragi traditional Regional customs include caring for the community through caring for the environment, the economic roots, and pastoral nomadic societies. The traditional conservation model, Alhima, sees pasture areas set aside for regeneration purposes. Traditional architecture created harmonious environment for harsh climate through sustainable designs. Wind towers for natural cooling system, tall alleyways for shade, and thick wall for natural is isolation. Generosity towards the community is also a pillar of Islamic tradition. The tradition of zakat, zakat guarantees support through a fixed contribution for the community, and in particular, giving to those less fortunate. In response of the harsh desert environment, Hospitality, diafa, is an integral part of tribal generosity and follows a strict code of honor. Gifting is deeply entertained in the Arab culture of hospitality and generosity. When choosing a gift, high quality is a priority. The art of perfuming is a strong part of Arab identity and encompasses the sense of community, ritual, and uh, gifting the use of layering of bukhur powders, oils, and perfume is an ancestral tradition passed down through generation. Luxury is firmly embedded in the story of the Gulf social traditions. The highest quality, premium materials, and the finest craftsmanship are symbols of the region, strong sense of respect and honor toward the community and its members. In a region where trust is a binding luxury is a trusted choice. In addition to the social values, the way of doing business is also a key factor for long-term perspective. Family forms the basis of community structure in the Gulf, providing both financial and emotional support to a wide network of family members, relation, relationship, and social ties are an integral part of the Middle East business culture. 90% of the companies of, in the region are family-owned businesses, constituting over three quarters of economic activity in the private sector. The previous chancellor of the American University of uh, Sharjah said family business model has become a culturally appropriate vehicle for the region sustainability. Family businesses into the CCC are principally first and second generation um, uh, established over 50 years ago. Respect for tradition and older members still prevail in family businesses today. 
women specifically are taking a larger and larger role into those businesses. These companies are facing one of the largest cha challenges yet, managing the transition of, to the third generation in the next five to 10 years. And we know that the passage for, at the third generation is also always very critical in a family business. Formal family governance structures are pivotal in succession planning and securing so solid sustainability for the future of the business. Family business model in the Middle East tend to uh, reinvest into the businesses for generations to come rather than uh, a rip of in short term uh, profits. My brother, my brother said that a family business driven like ours, driven by values of respect, excellency, and entrepreneurial spirit, we really believe uh, that this region and its potential, and we want to make sure that our group will be still around in six years from now. The social culture and the family business are the roots which explain this region can play a key role in building sustainability despite all the criticism which we have heard about it. But obviously, it's not enough. I will show some of the key initiatives currently done to go further in response to the priority challenges exposed into the three um, paradoxes I exposed. The challenge is to be a society dependent on energy and non-renewable resources. Oil and the gas accounts for 33% of the GCC GDP and 84% of the GCC government budget. According to the government, sustainable solution will come, economic diversification, innovation, entrepreneurship. GCC is committed to reinvest oil and gas revenue into infrastructure, housing, education, and healthcare in order to develop long-term economic environment and social sustainability for generations ahead. His Highness, Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Maktoum said, we want our public and private sector to explore new horizons to develop our economy. Innovation is our only way to build a great history of the United Arab Emirates. The future will be for those who adapt, who adopt innovation. In Saudi Arabia, the King Abdullah University of Science and Technology is a graduate level research university established by Aramco, the world's lar largest energy corporation and the first platinum led certified project. Another example, is the Qatar Foundation for Education, Science, and Community Development. Master plans of a new vision of social and environmental harmony will reshape social principle of living. Abu Dhabi Masdar City, a subsidiary of Mubadala Development Company with the aim to achieve a low carbon or zero carbon waste city through solar and other renewable sources will cover an area of 2.4 kilometers, the equivalent of 250 football fields, and will be powered by Shamswan, the largest solar plant into the Middle East. Dubai Expo 2020, the world exhibition that will celebrate innovation and connecting minds. 50% of the operational energy requirements will come from renewable sources. 30% of construction for the expo site will come from recycled materials. In conjunction with Dubai 2020, government vehicles will switch to compressed natural gas. The current challenge remains youth unemployment. High population growth rates, a young population, an increased in labor force together with skills mismatch have all contributed to one of the region's most problematic social challenges. 30% among youth in Saudi Arabia are unemployed. MENA will require more than 50 million 
jobs over the next decade to ensure social and political stability. Thank you. The sustainable solution is a qualitative education. And I'm glad that we have such initiative that the American University of Sharjah to, to offer it to us. And a qualitative education for all with the necessity of a stronger vocational training and national integration. National integration in its various form of Gulfanization. It is a lot academy has been one of the first initiatives. Uh, it is the training and development arm of Etisalat and the largest single source provider of training and development uh, solution in the Middle East. Partnered with the program Educate a Child, Build a Nation to support computer literacy program for children living in the United Arab Emirates. Our group have engaged into many initiatives about education. We have established in Dubai, but also in Jeddah, in Riyadh, retail academies to train and uh, our uh, uh, workforce into uh, getting a great uh, uh, retail uh, component into their education. Another one in our industry has been the creation with the American University of Sharjah of the luxury brand management professorship. Encompassing courses in luxury brand management, fashion, marketing, and basic in luxury principles. The objective is to fill the gap between industry and academia. Students are mentored by eight senior executives of our group. Today, more than 70 students have completed the senior level course it's, uh, since its launch in 2012. Mrs. Murtada, former Vice Chancellor of the American University of Sharjah said, the luxury brand management professorship established at AUS has demonstrated the strengths inherent in partnering business and education for an economical, sustainable United Arab Emirates. Sustainable solution is also making entrepreneurship a priority for national agendas. The fastest growth in the entrepreneurship worldwide is taking place into the MENA. Again, let me present here only two of those examples. Abu Dhabi government founded the Khalifa Fund. Our group have partnered with the Khalifa Fund to, uh, in order to create three-pronged projects, merging knowledge, sharing, mentorship, and experiential uh, learning. Workshop are delivered to Khalifa Found staff on retail, specific skills, as well as annual seminar organized for entrepreneurs who are given the opportunity to observe back-end store operation. Dr. Hilal Al-Sukari, advisor of the CEO of Khalifa Founds, have said public-private relationship encourage a positive change in our society by nurturing entrepreneurial activities in their development. In the Levant, other key initiatives have been taken. A bad, better young entrepreneurial program in which, again, our group has participated is a joint venture with the Lebanese Finance uh, Ministry and 40 young business leaders, which is providing education, financing, and networking for the next generation of entrepreneurs. Today, millions of dollars have been invested into those startups. Hundreds of thousands of dollars have been invested into a scholarship to train those entrepreneurs and have been awarded to those entrepreneurs in order that they can fulfill their initiative. Those examples are among many uh, which uh, uh, exist today uh, 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 of a lot of initiative which are being taken in order to be able to face the challenges which we are facing. It clearly demonstrates the importance of environment and education to which our group is investing quite heavily. And it is important to create this sustainable future into the region. For, consumer, uh, for consumers as well, it's a lot of question mark. The challenge which we have to face together 
is a very high expectation of uh, our customers towards corporate sustainability. 83% of people whom we have um, surveyed are expecting our retail stores where they buy to be engaged in environmental and friendly activity. 68% of our customers still feel that we are the brands, the retailers are not uh, caring enough about the environment and the community. But those customers trust us and we shouldn't disappoint them. So we have to work clearly in order to make it happen. Consumer expectation is to see more and more the private sector contributing to this need for the future, as demonstrated into some of those um, examples. Dubai Future Fashion is an initiative, a concept for sustainable and responsible fa fashion. A marketplace bringing together beauty and fashion, a driven sustainable product from all or, uh, around the world. The main purpose is to maximize benefit to people and communities with minimizing impact on the environment, such as the sustainable abaya made out of high-end eco fabrics from certified manufacturers. The green building of Majid Futem properties is an initiative driven by the real estate and properly services company. Member of the UN Global Compact since 2013, 33% of the assets have green building certification. 20% of water consumption in all malls have been reduced and 100% of all new talents at, uh, uh, leases have green clauses. The previous CEO of Majid Futem Property declared, I fundamentally believe that every organization into the Middle East and North Africa should hold sustainability as a core philosophy. What we are noticing is this change of mindset and uh, uh, about sustainability. A new archetype is arriving with greater sense of pragmatism and consciousness to be part of a fragile world. This new archetype is distance itself from the materialistic world and appreciate luxury for the experience it offers, for the enjoyment it offers. They have a passion which they like to share, bound is their key driver. They are attached to bespoke and made to measure items and intimate events. In store, knowledge of the brand history, heritage, plus deep understanding of how the product is made are paramount. There are um, the need of us becoming storytellers. The answer of the big picture of this world challenges start by visionary leaders. Today, more and more, the private sectors combine their uh, efforts with public sectors and NGO to set the path in order to change the mindset and shape a different future. Today, the consumer, like the government, the public and private sectors are totally part of this silent revolution, the revolution of consciousness. They are all becoming engaged actors with a clear social and environmental conscience. It's not uh, worse anymore, but real contribution. And to conclude, I believe that by, by combining our individual efforts, we will be able to contribute into this region's sustainable future. Thank you.